Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to more or less the final revision section for the May 2021 ICANN examination for financial reporting. And uh, we are starting a little bit uh, late or behind the schedule due to one or two factors. One is to allow certain number of people join since we know that we are the extreme hours of our preparation for the exam. <laughs> and furthermore, on the dot of 427, I think I finished um, a session. We started around 10 for professionals, those that have been chartered accountant for many years, both those in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Uh, I just finished their own session and I felt like, okay, let me give some allowance so that we can get our strengths. Okay, um, that is that for now. And uh, today we'll be looking at question based on your demands with respect to uh, preparation and presentation of financial statements in line with the requirement of IS1, IS7, and also of other relevant standards. Okay, as you are aware, I can ask a compulsory question that account for about 40%. And this question could come from business combination, which we have dealt with extensively. And it can also come from preparation and presentation of um, financial statements, and which is what we are trying to look at. In. And I believe all of you have been provided these questions and answer before today. But what we tend to do now is to pick those questions and try to deliberate on critical aspect of the question. And that's what I wanted to do today. And um, I expect us to effectively participate in this session because it's critical. Virtually all aspect of this question speaks to one or two areas that will surely be covered by the examination. Because this question is not just on preparation of financial statements, it's more or less devil into various aspects of the standards, such as event evaluation, such as accounting for PP, uh, impairment of financial assets, um, measurement of financial instruments, uh, issues that borders on income taxes, statement of cash flows, and et cetera. And therefore, we need to explore more and enhance the benefit associated with it. And that's what I expect from us. Now, what I'm going to do now is, um, I want somebody to read the first um, half of the question, and I want somebody else to read the second half of the question. If you are willing to kindly signify by a show of hand in the chat box, and uh, I'll select two people, preferably one male and one female. The male will read the first angle of the question from the beginning of the question through the trial balance up to additional note one and note two. Why the second half of the question will be read by another person from note three to note uh, five and the requirement. I want one or two people to signify their hands for me to select for this purpose. <laughs> okay, Oluwa to be aware, selected to read the first um, phase. I'll need a guy for the second phase. Guys, kindly show up your hand. And I think it might be on the first come first serve basis. Guys, are you there? Okay, Joshua will be the second, which is a guy. Over to you now, Oluwa Tobi. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So I read, Farayola PLC, a trading company commenced business on the 2nd of January, 2016, and prepares its account. Okay, thank you very much. And prepares its account up to 31st December every year. The company, as at 1st of April 2018, issued an additional 50 million shares at the full market price of 4 naira 20 kobo per share, fully paid, which has been recorded in the books. 
The current market price of the company shares as at 31st December 2018 stood at 4 naira 35 kobo per share. The company operates within the tax regime, which subjects company's taxable profit to a tax of 40% and payment made on and on a preceding year basis, which is not more than 12 to 15 months payment of taxes on an equal spread as may be agreed with the tax authority. Below is the trial balance of the company as at 31st December 2018. Now we have uh, the ordinary share capital, that's 50 kobo, 100,000 credits, share premium, 400,000 credits, uh, motor vehicles, 50,000 debits, uh, property, 120,000 debits, uh, plants and equipment, 100,000 debits, software costs, 20,000 debits. And then we have accumulated depreciation motor vehicles, 20,000 credits, accumulated depreciation for plants and equipment, 20,000 credits, accumulated amortization software, 8,000 credits, revenue, 24 million 500,000 credits, inventory as at 1st January 2018, 800,000 debits, purchases, 12,100,000 debits, trade discount received, 100,000 credits, cash discount allowed, 50,000 debits, rent and rates, 829,900, Repairs and maintenance 367,000, sorry, 257. Personal costs 5,326,352. Printing and stationery 62,428. Other operational costs 836,534. Distribution and trucking expenses, uh, sorry. Distribution and trucking expenses 1372863. Television expense, telephone expense 6625822. Okay, sorry, the screen keeps moving. Financial assets 3 million. Bank. Sorry, am I reading the right? Bank 1965691. Yes, thank you very much for the course of petty cash 1627 trade receivables 9353229 debit. So we have the ta deferred tax liability 11,155067, current tax payable 127386 credits, current tax payable 138948 credit, bank overdraft 529309. Credits, dividend paid as at 30th May 2018, that's 800,000 debit. Retained earning as at 1st January 2018, that's 740950 credit. Interest on back bank overdraft, 41,097 debit. Interest insurance, 16853 um, debit. And we have our total on both the debit and credit side being 37839653. So additional information. The company inventory management system maintained is a periodic system and the current valuation on the basis of selling price less cost to sale as at 31st December 2018 stood at 846,242,000 Naira. Whereas the stock taken vis-a-vis -vis the tally being card reviewed the amount of inventory to be 8740861000 for tax purposes any write off or write back on inventory is acceptable then additional information too says the useful lives remain unchanged since the commencement of the business of purchases and are as follows property 40 years motor vehicles 5 years plant and equipment 10 years software 5 years the current year depreciation has not been charged and the property was acquired as at 30th December 2017. When the title was perfected and ownership handed over to the company. And the cost comprises of two components, that is the non-depreciable component, which is the land, which is the land in the sum of 70 million and the depreciable component, that is the building, constitutes the remaining cost. So, 
I thank you very know. much. Thank you very much. Okay, Joshua, over to you, Joshua. Joshua, can you unmute? Okay, Oyin Kosala, go ahead. Welcome, can you unmute? Okay, Zoba, over to you. Number three, additional information three. The current year taxes, current and deferred taxes, in brackets, have not yet been determined nor assessed. And the following information is relevant for tax assessment for the year ended 31st December 2018. One, the current tax provision for 2017 was overstated by 95,727,000. Two, the other operational costs included, the other operational costs included accrued fines and penalties of 10 million naira, which are not allowable for tax purposes at no time. Three, the trucking expenses included the sum of 125 million 389,000 naira, which was only accrued for as invoice has since not been obtained and no payment has been made. Whereas for tax purposes, such expenses accrued for are only allowed for tax purposes on a cash basis. For accounting depreciation is allowed and in lieu, the capital allowance was granted between 2016 and 2017 and will likely not change at the following rate. Model vehicles 25% on cost for first four years, plant and equipment 20% on cost for first five years, software cost 40% on cost for first year and 30% on cost for second year and third year respectively. Property 10% on cost for first 10 years. The tax rate has remained unchanged over the years and unlikely to change in future years. Additional information four, the financial assets comprise of the following. One, equity investment portfolio A in the sum of 2.2 billion naira acquired on 1st of July, 2018, and of the business model, and of the business model to act actively trade for speculative capital appreciations and taking advantage of arbitrage opportunities in the market. As at the year end, investments have not been sold would have its fair value as at the 1st December 2018 to be 2.24 billion naira. Two, another set of equity investment portfolio B that are solely held to meet liquidity requirements slated for the future. And the board of the company by irrevocable election designated, irre irrevocable election designated the equity investment portfolio B at fair value through other comprehensive income. The investment portfolio B was acquired on 10 September 2018, and the current fair value stood at 780 million naira. Additional information five, trade receivables are grouped below according to their past due. And the company has before, since- Sorry, before information five, you've missed this uh, okay. part of information. Okay. okay. The equity investments have no tax implications as gain arising from their disposal are exempted from income taxes. 
five trade receivables are grouped below according to their past due and the company has since with effect from 1st of January 2018 adopted the IFRS 9 expected credit loss model with the aid of simplified approach profit matrix methodology in brackets the opening balance of the allowance for credit losses that okay. is what is in the brackets is provision matrix methodology not profit provision, provision matrix matrix, provision matrix methodology the, op the opening balance of the allowance for credit losses that is in payment provision at the 1st of January 2018 was 249,999,000 Naira. This amount was erroneously omitted in the closing trial balance of 2017 and also still omitted in the trial balance of as at 31st December 2018. Allowance for credit losses or the reversals are not allowable for deduction or taxable or taxable under the current tax regime, except where there is an actual bad debt written off or recovered. Since the commencement of business, there have been no records of bad debts written off, bad debts write off. So the table being referenced, past due, uh, the, the headers are past due, current amount, amount between one to 30 days, amount within 31 to 60 days, amount within 61 to 90 days, an amount above 90 days with their loss rates indicated. Required, A, prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended at 1st December 2018. B, prepare the statement of financial position as at the end ended 31st December 2018. C, prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 2018. D, prepare an abridged statement of cash flows, showing only the cash flows generated from or consumed. Can you hear me? Zoba, we can hear you now. Okay, Start I was Okay, required. Prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st December 2018. B, prepare the statement of financial position as at year ended 31st December 2018. C, prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 2018. D, prepare an abridged statement of cash flows showing only the cash flows generated from or consumed by operating activities by adopting the indirect method, given the following Given the following are closing balances as at 31st December 2017. Trade receivables, cash and cash equivalents, trade payables, current tax payables with their respective amounts, with cash and cash equivalents having no astounding bank overdrafts. E, determine the basic and diluted earnings per share for the year ended 31st December 2018. All calculations should be rounded off to the nearest thousands. I have a question, please. I'm, I'm done with the reading, reading this out. I have, a, I have a question. Okay, okay. So before your question, you will observe that I've granted autonomous access to everybody to be able to unmute themselves without me giving permission. The essence of that is that intermittently people might ask questions. This is like a revision class where is a question and answer. And please let us endeavor to be much more civil with the use of um, um, the, the, the platform so that we don't make noise at the background. You mute once you are not contributing and you mute when you are to contribute. And once you observe noise in your background, it will be better to contribute through other mediums like chat, or you walk away from there or you tell them to leave that environment. Okay, thank you. Now over to you, Zuba, for your question now. Okay, please um, scroll up to um, the information, the additional information two. I think you can see all of them at once now. 
No, I just, okay, okay, yes. Um, my question is this. Question is um, this. Can you I think you're not talking. Yeah, okay, continue. Okay, okay. The, the, um, in this additional information, so it says the current year depreciation has not been charged and the property was acquired as a 30th December 2017. Which property was it making reference to? It says the property. Okay. In your, in your travel balance, you have property now. This property, not 20 million. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So this property comprises of building and land as well. And then it is saying that, that land is 17 million out of it. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. Thank you. The essence for that, who can tell me the essence for why you are trying to emphasize the difference between land and building for the property? Okay, I think they are doing that to, to show, uh, well, for, for us to know which portion of that amount of property that should be subjected to depreciation and which one would not be subjected to depreciation? We have answered it appropriately. That is it. Now, the way we are going to look at it is that we will be less interested in the trial balance. Because without this additional information, it won't take you 20 minutes to plot the trial balance and produce account. One matter in the whole of this process are this additional information and the open information, travel balance is less important because all of you know how to fix in all of these items as asset, expense, income, equity, and et cetera. You understand? But what matter is the information provided here? Now, let's start with this. I'm going to magnify those areas we want to discuss. And uh, you can hold your pen to judge key points of those areas. Now, I'll read this question here. Yeah. I'll read this information, I guess. Let me enlarge it more. Fariola is a trading company with comment business on 2nd of January 2016 and prepares its account up to 31st December every year. The company has at 1st of April 2018 issued additional 50 million shares at full market price of 420 cover per share, fully paid, which has since been recorded in the books. The current market price of the company shares today, which is the reporting date, 31st December 2018, stood at 435 cover per share. The company operates within a tax regime, which subjects company's taxable profit to a tax of 40% and payments made on a preceding year basis, which is no more than 12 to 15 months payment of taxes on an equal spread as may be agreed with the tax authority. Now, who can explain? Let us take away the tax aspects. The first sentence or two sentences I've read which borders on additional issue of shares, which has been recorded. What is the significance of that information? to you in the whole process of solving this problem. Contribution, before I put my own view. If you want to contribute, you can directly unmute yourself and contribute. Um. We can continue. Okay, um, I think that means there would have been a right issue as a 1st of April, 2018. Um, since the company share price, okay, hold on. Let, let me look through closely. Okay, any other person? Oh, yeah. Any other person? Remember, it's participatory. Any other person before I make my comments?
Okay, what I'll say here is very simple. It is not a right issue. Yeah, yeah. Why is it not a right issue? It was not issue that the price lowered. It wasn't the, there was no information given about to that. The, the value of the of the shares. And at two, it was not issued below the market price. Yeah, it wasn't issued. I'll below. have been a benefit to the existing shareholders to take up rights. If so you look at this phrase, the phrase here says fully what paid, and it was issued at full what market price as at that date. This full market price as at this date is different from the reporting date. This is about nine months after. Therefore, don't miss it up. Okay, now what is paramount here is that this information here is only relevant for the computation of basic and diluted earnings per share. And I believe you have done IS 33. Where when shares are issued during the year at full market price, you need to carry out a weight analysis, weighted average to determine the amount of shares that will be considered in determining the basic earnings per share. And that is the relevance of this, which means though 50 million already has been recorded in the account, according to the information, the share capital in the formation, 50 cobo per share, for you to have 100 million, that means divided by 50 cobo is 200 million shares, of which 150 million shares were existing before 1st of April 2018. That means that 150 shares will have ranked for 12 months all year, and the additional 50 million shares will have ranked for only nine months, starting from 1st of April, 2018 to that 1st of December, 2018. Does that make further clarification? And which means if you go to the solution, in computing EPS, you see that first, the existing shares for the first three months is 150. Why for the next nine months, it is both existing and new shares that make up 200. And if you remember, three months is three over 12, which is 0.25. You can check here, three over 12. And nine months is nine over 12, which is 0.5. The weighted average shares is what you have obtained by the product of the time fraction and the unit of shares to get this. If you don't want to use this approach, you can further use an approach which I will just put here. And what is the approach? I'll just put the class existing shares. And I'll put new shares. Existing shares rank for the whole year. And that is 12 months. And the other one rank for nine months. Therefore, Periods in months. Okay, this is 12 months and this is nine months. Now, how many shares? 150,000 or 150 million, as the case may be since we are doing everything in thousands and 50 shares for 50,000 shares for nine months. That is what make up the 200,000. Why? Because the information given to us here, the information given to us here says, this has been recorded, which has since been recorded in the books, which means to have 2 million uh, 200,000 shares, which is 100,000 now divided by 50 cobo, the 50 million shares has already been included, which is what we have there. Okay. Now, alternative to this is now 12 over 12 is one and nine over 12, 
9 over 12 is 0.75. Therefore, what is the product? The product is one times 150 is 150. 0.75 times 50 is 37.5, which is still going to give you the same result. Either of the approaches you have adopted, you are still going to get the same thing. And that is that. That is completion of our basic and diluted EPS. And which means what we needed is weighted average. Okay, that is the significance of that information one. Now, what is the significance of information two? Tax. The information two is that one, they provided us with the tax rates, which is 40%, and they provided us that for every tax liability, it's going to be considered current liability because the payment of tax will not exceed 12 months or 15 months from the reporting dates. Okay, that is that. Now let's move further. The first additional information, who can explain what it is after I finish reading it? The company's inventory management system maintain a periodic system. As an accountant, you are aware that there are two forms of inventory system that a company can maintain. One is periodic system. Who can tell me the second one? What is the second inventory management system that an organization can maintain? The first is periodic. What is the second? I await your contributions. What is the second? Perpetual. Thank you. Uh, who mentioned perpetual? That's Oluwa uh, Shemilori. That is nice. Perpetual inventory system. Who can tell me the difference between perpetual inventory system and periodic inventory system? At least you did uh, cost accounting, management accounting, performance management. Who will contribute to that? I want somebody to unmute and contribute immediately, please. There's where I'm going to in that. And that's why it's key for us to. OK, uh, Guinea Kachi says the difference is how often the inventory is updated. I'm, I'm highly uh, glad with your statement there. But let me share something with you. That's so nice of you. Okay. Now, can somebody read this? Can somebody read it, please? Aisha? Or oh, peace. You are over to you, peace. A perpetual inventory system, inventory updates purchases and sales records constantly, particularly impacting merchandise inventory and cost of goods sold. A periodic inventory system only record updates to inventory and cost of sales at scheduled times throughout the year, not constantly. Okay, thank you. You can read more. The effect of them is that depending on the method you use, there is a slight adjustment when you have inventory for valuing your cost of sales at every point in time. But again, there's no material difference in it. The difference is that if you have a more robust inventory management system, you will always embrace perpetual. But in this part of the world, we embrace much more of periodic. That's why you do stock counts every end of the month and at the end of the year. Okay. Now, if you leave that and uh, let us go back to the information here, what is the implication of that in the whole of this 
information. What's the implication of that? The company's event management system maintains its periodic system. And the current valuation on the basis of selling price less cost to sell as at 31st December stood at 846,000 naira, whereas the stock value in our ledger, in our bean card, or anywhere we call it, revealed that the amount was 874 million, it is 7,000. For tax purpose, any write off or write back on inventory is acceptable, which means if it's write off, it's deductible for tax. If it's write back, it's taxable. Who can interpret what this all additional information one is? with reference to IS2. Who can contribute to that with reference to IS2? Before I make my own contribution and show you what the implication is. Okay, Zoba, your mute, what is it? Okay, um, I think from that information, it, it, it kind of shows that um, the inve inventory has been underreported, has been undervalued. Um, perhaps there has been some purchases during the year that have not been taken note of, or maybe um, some issues, some things have been issued at which were not supposed to be. But then from that information, it shows that some stock, some inventory items have not been captured in the total valuation of the inventory that was reported. Okay. So I, there, I, so there should be a right I, I, Yeah, I agree with your conclusion with respect to write off, but I didn't agree with your, with the body of your, uh, the justification. Because the information provided here does not speak to issue that something was wrong or incomplete record or wrong entry. The information is clear. The information says that there was stock valuation done at the end of the year. And the stock valuation will compare the net realizable value with the cost. Remember, what is in your books, your bean card, your ledger, stock ledger is your cost. You understand the cost of unsold goods. Now, independently, IS2 says you should account for inventory at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Now, your cost shows 874 million, but your net realizable value, which is selling price, less cost to sell, shows 846. The question is which one are you going to adopt for the purpose of accounting? Is it the cost or net realizable value and why? Okay, um, we should actually hold, hello? I can hear you. Okay, um, actually it, it, should, it should be the higher of cost or net, net, naturalizable value. Higher or lower? Hello? Higher or lower? What is the requirement of IS2? I, the lower of cost and net like and NRV. Okay, which one is lower now between the two? The lower is um, the the value, the reported amount, the reported value. What is the reported value? Eight hundred and forty-six million two forty-two thousand. Okay, now let us look at. What I have done here. For inventory valuation, where have I made use of it? Okay, cost of sales. In determining your cost of sales, you need your opening inventory. You need your opening inventory. You need to add net purchases which means your purchases less trade discount, 
which give you your cost of goods available for sale, less closing stock. But there is a problem with this closing stock. The actual amount of closing stock is 874, but the net realizable value is 846. What does IS2 say? It says you should measure it at the lower of cost and net realizable value. That is why we have come for this, which is what is the treatment you have to give to that. Now, the second leg to the question is issue of tax. For tax purposes, any write-off or write-back is acceptable, which means there's no adjustment when we come to computation of current tax, which means the tax authority also accepts it as an expense or as a loss to be deducted from taxable profits. But this situation, if it has changed, so that the examiner says for tax purposes, any write-off or write-back on event three is not acceptable. In that situation, what you have to do is that when you get to your tax computation, you have to add it back to your profit because it's not deductible. And that will also give rise to deferred tax. When we get to tax aspect, we'll discuss it further. Does that answer your question now? Remember, I've said that forget trial balance. Everything to a balance, if it's the only information given to you, you plot it very straightforward. But what matters are the additional word information. If there's any question, kindly raise up your hand or kindly unmute yourself and ask or send a chat. If there's none, I want somebody to read information too, and that same person interpret one or two things in that information. Okay, somebody asked, if the value of purchases is to be derived, will the cost or natural value be used? If you have to walk back to determine purchases, you will make use of the inventory value in your stock ledger to derive it. It's only when the information given to you otherwise states that you should make use of the natural value. Because remember, your ledger account, we only consider cost, except when you have adjusted it for the stock right off, based on writing it down to the net realizable value when such is lower. I believe that answers your question. Okay, now let's move further. Question, uh, that's additional information too. Who will volunteer to read that? Okay, I will. Okay, Zuba, go ahead. The useful lives remain unchanged since the commencement of business purchases and are as follows. Property 40 years, motor vehicles five years, plant and equipment 10 years, software five years. The current depreciation has not been charged and property was acquired as of 30 September 2017 when the title was perfected and ownership handed over to the company. And the cost comprises of two components. Non-depreciable component, which is the land in the sum of 70 million naira and the depreciable components, the building, constitute the remaining cost. Okay, what this implies is this, that the, um, of the 120 million, of the 120 million um, costs of property that was reported, um, 70 million relates to land, and so the obstruction will not be completed. However, they have, they've also given us information that since the asset was acquired, the appreciation has not been, has not been um, calculated and recorded. So in the current period, we are going to um, compute the appreciation on the 50 million that relates to the building and charge it to POL. But, but then, looking at the date of, um, of this acquisition, 30th December, there should be a one-day depreciation charge in 2017 as well that may have to be computed. And then I think that one will then go to retain earnings for the prior, previous period. That's what okay. I said. Okay, now let me break it down one by one. The first phrase here says the current depreciation has not been charged. And that relates to all of the assets 
be it property, motor vehicle, plant and equipment, and software. That is number one, which means you need to compute depreciation for the current year and pass the entry appropriately. The second one was not specific to property to say, and the property was acquired as a 30th December 2017, when the title was perfected and ownership handed over to the company. Now, when you check our trial balance, we have how many assets? Property, motor vehicle, plant and equipment, and software. But the accumulated deposition we have is only for three, including amortization. Motor vehicles, plant and equipment, and software. There is none for property. Who can tell me why? Who can tell me why? Who can tell me why? I think the property was um, acquired a day to the end of reporting date of the previous year. So I do not think any accumulated depreciation. Which means no uh, depreciation will have been charged in 2017 invariably. Yeah. That is why. And that's why they are emphasizing on this date, which means the first year you are depreciating the asset will be in 2018 for your whole year. Is that correct? That is yes. That. Yeah, that is that. Somebody will have said, why can't you charge the position for two days, 30th and 31st? Who can tell me why you won't have charged the position for two days, 30th December 2017 and 31st December 2017? Why would you have charged the position for two days? Who can tell me why? Um, I think the position is charged as um, an annual, like charged once annually and not daily or weekly. Or... Ah, okay, let me now challenge you. What if the property was bought on 1st of December, 2017? Would you charge the position of one month? Uh, okay, you, I think you can prorate depreciation on a monthly yeah, basis. If you can prorate, why can't you not prorate for two days out of 365 days? Who can answer that question? Why can't I, since I can prorate for a month, I can prorate for a quarter, I can prorate for even month and days. How come I'm not prorating for just two days out of 365 days? I'll give you a clue to the answer. Refer to conceptual framework. Who will give me an answer? If you refer to conceptual framework. Substance over form. No, it's not substance over form. Who can give me the answer? I'll give you a clue. There's a principle on that conceptual framework. Some said the asset has not been put to use. That's not correct. In this information here, it was silent, and therefore, when such is silent, it means the asset is already put to use. Because there's no other condition you are waiting for to put it to use when the land and property is already built, everything, the beauty is already there. What is stopping you from using it? You not using it is different from being in the state of being put to use. Therefore, that will not be correct. Who can answer that question? Uh, can we relate that to materiality concepts? God bless you. Materiality concepts. One day, two days is immaterial to the entire operation. Therefore, you have to start the position from the next year. And that's why you also see that in organizations, we also have this materiality concept used for cut off dates. Some organization will tell you that asset that is purchased between the first 15 days of the month will go in for the session in that month. Otherwise, anything purchased day after the 15th day, which is from 16 to the end of the month, will go in from the next month. Thank you very much. Um, who is that? Um, 
Awe Abi Oke Tobi Awe. Thank you very much. That is that. Now the second one is this. The asset we are told that the property has two components. Not the principal component, which is the land, and the principal component, which is the building. Out of the one twenty thousand or one twenty million, seventy million is land. Automatically, fifty million will be building. And when we are to compute the position, we only compute on the building. Okay, and in doing that, the building is for 40 years, which means 50 million divided by 40 years will give us what we we'll calculate as our annual depreciation charge. Now, I want to give it to you. How will I know my depreciation charge for motor vehicle, plant and equipment and software since I was not given the useful life directly from this question? How can I determine that? Is there any indirect way the examiner has provided such an information to me? Look at this information here. And compare it with the information here about property accumulated depreciation. Let me minimize it so that I can see it at a glance. What is the correlation? Who can answer that? I'm waiting. What is the question? The question is, since I'm not especially given certain information about depreciation for motor vehicle, plant and equipment and software, I was only given five years useful life from the time it was purchased, and there's no information of the date it was purchased, likewise of plant and equipment and software. How then do I go ahead to compute my depreciation for the year? I think we can use the accumulated depreciation and the current amount of those um, items and the useful life to get uh, what would be our okay. Uh, okay. current. For that, okay. For you to demonstrate that understanding, use motor vehicle. Motor vehicle has five years useful life. The cost of the motor vehicle was 50,000, uh, 50 million. Accumulated depreciation of the motor vehicle was 20 million as at end of 2017. The question then is, tell us more about it so that we can know how to uh, use it to determine how you get the depreciation so that probably we can replicate that for plant and equipment and software. I miss it has been depreciated for two years. For two years? How do you know that it has been depreciated for two years? Um, the useful life is for motor vehicles is five years. Okay. And in the accumulated depreciation, we have 20, 20, 20 million, which would have been the portion you take, um, if you divide the cost of the motor vehicles there by five, you have 10 million. What is the million. cost of the motor vehicle? 50, 50 million. 50 million by five is annual depreciation of 10 million per 10 year. Million. The question then is, how many 10 million can you find in 20 million accumulated depreciation? It's two. two. Which means you can invariably and comfortably say that the asset was purchased on 1st of January 2016. Yes. Such that you have depreciated 10 million in 2016, 10 million in 2017. That's how you got the accumulated. Is that correct? Yes. Which means what will be the depreciation for 2018? And what will be the accumulated depreciation for 2018? And what will be the net book value for 2018? Can you answer that? Yes, 10, um, 10 million will be the depreciation value. Accumulated depreciation will be 30 million, and the NPV will be 20 million. And you have a 20 million NPV. Um, the cost minus the accumulated depreciation as at the end of the year. Okay, thank you. That is what you do for motor vehicle, plant and equipment, and the software. And let us see how we have done it here. And this is to demonstrate that you understand the principle. Look at how we have done it here. Look at it here. 
depletion of property, plant, and equipment. Motor vehicle was 50 million for five years, it's 10 million. Property is for 40 years. Um, what's it called? Um, land, non depreciable, and plant and equipment for 10 years. This is a depreciation for the first. This adaptation for the first, um, what's it called? For the first, uh, that's for 2018. Okay, now software own. Remember, software is amortization. The same principle applies, and that is that. Now, that is a common and simplest principle you need to know to determine all of this. Okay. And in determining the carrying amount, can you see? It is the cost, as we have it in the books, less the accumulated depreciation. And the accumulated depreciation is the initial one given to us in the question, to our balance, plus the depreciation we charge here. And that is it. And the same thing you did for property. Property had no opening balance. And the same thing you did for plant and wall equipment and your software cost. Any question on that? Which means we have dealt with note two. We have dealt with note two. That is note two. Now let's look at note three. I want somebody to have good knowledge of income taxes to look at note three and let us discuss on it. Note three. I want somebody to read note three who has knowledge of income tax so that we can start from that angle. Who is a tax expert here? Okay. okay, yeah, right. The current year taxes, current and deferred taxes have not yet been determined nor assessed. And the following information is relevant for tax assessment for the year ended 31st December 2018. The current tax provision for 2017 was overstated by 95,727,000. The well, other Let's stop at that. We'll be picking it one by one. Okay. When your current tax provision for last year was overstated, the treatment accorded it under IS 12 is what? How do we treat under or over provision for tax? In this case, we have over provided for tax in 2017 and we are 2018. What is the requirement of IS 12? Okay. Anybody can answer. Including peace. Okay, the requirement is you less current year tax from from it. Or you it deduct is... it from current year tax. You use it to reduce reduce it. Tax. Okay, now let me show you how we reduce it. Now in the current year, we did tax assessments. Our current tax note 15, verse 15. Now, see our current tax, forget this computation, but our current tax has estimated at 40% is this amount. Immediately what you do, we less over provision for 2017, which is 95. And that is the implication, which means that will reduce your current year tax. If it's under provision, what it will do is to increase your current year tax, and that is that. Now let's go to the following information. Next information. The other operational costs included accrued fines and penalty of 10 million error, which are not allowable 
for tax purposes at no time. What does that mean? Anybody it, can answer? It means it's not admissible. It will be added back to the, it will be added back to the profit. Okay. It will be added back to the profit. Abby? And yes. this difference, will it give rise to temporary difference or permanent difference? It will, give... uh, it will lead to a permanent difference. Why? Why will it lead to money difference, Toby? Who will support Toby? Okay, if there's nobody to support, I will support her. It's a permanent difference because at no point in the future will this be allowed for deduction. That's why they said not allowable for tax purposes at no time. Therefore, it's a permanent difference. Now, let's see how we adjust this for tax in note 15. It is part of the items you added back. Can you see? Add back fines and what? Penalties. And that is that. OK, please, go ahead. The third information. OK. The trucking expense included the sum of 125,389,000, which was only accrued for as invoice has since not, for as invoice has since not been obtained and no payment has been made. Whereas for tax purposes, such expenses accrued for are only allowed for tax purposes on a cash basis. This is similar to what we discussed two days ago in the question of income tax. What they are saying is that you have accrued for this expense, but this expense by nature has not yet been paid for. And from the angle of tax, it's only expense you have paid for that is deductible. The one you have not paid for that you merely accrue in line with the IFRS will only be acceptable for deduction in future periods when they are paid for. And since this is an accrued expense, it is not yet paid for. It then means that in the process of computing your current tax, you will add it back. And that is what you find here. Add back and quit talking about expenses. And automatically, this will give rise to defer tax. When we get to defer tax computation, we'll see that. But take note of that. Any question? If none, proceed on the next one. Accounting depreciation is disallowed and in lieu. A capital allowance was granted between 2016 and 2017 and will likely not change at the following rate. Motor vehicle, 25% on cost for first four years. Plant and equipment, 20% on cost for first five years. Software cost, 40% on cost for first year and 30% on cost for second and third year respectively. Property, 10% on cost for first 10 years. The tax rate has remained unchanged over the years and unlikely to change in the future years. Okay. Who can explain the implication of this? What's the implication of this? Okay, let me try. The accounting depreciation is disallowed. So for all these um, the assets- The were charged before, that is- They were charged before, so it's going to be added back. Now, let so me the tell you one by one. These are the depreciation we have charged, Abby. 10 million, 1.250, 10, 40, and et cetera, uh, 4 million. Therefore, what you are saying is that those depreciation will have been added back. Depreciation of PP, and the advertisement of software. What next, based on your information? What next? Capital allowance will be granted. Allowance. Okay. Granted, okay, tell me, let us put them one by one. How will you grant capital allowance for motor vehicle? You said it's 20 oh, okay. Continue. Said it's twenty five percent on cost. Twenty five percent on cost. Now, what yeah. was the cost? 
The cost is 50 million. Yes, sir. Which means each year from 2016. How do I know it's 2016? Because remember, we did an analysis for motor vehicle that proved that two years of station has been charged up to 2017, which means 2016, 2017, which means we'll have charged 25% in 2015, uh, 16, 25% in 2017. Now you want to charge 25% in 2018. What about plant and equipment? How many years backward? First five years, 20%. Yes, but plant and equipment was purchased when? If you look at the same thing we did, if plant and equipment has how many years useful life? 10 years. And 10 years divided by 100 million is what? 10 million per year. And you have only accumulated 20 million. It means you have only done for two years. Two years up to 2017 is 2016, 2017, which means the same thing will have happened here, whereby the equipment will have been charged for 20% in 2016, 20% in 2017, and now we need to charge 20% in 2018. What would that be? Now, let's look at that, yeah. Let's see how we did that. Now for property, plant and equipment. Okay, this is the cost. Where's the place we did the analysis? The capital allowance, okay, look at it. The capital allowance in year one, two, and year three. Remember, motor vehicle was acquired in year one. Year one of motor vehicle is 2016. Motor vehicle in year two is 2017, and year three is what, 2018. Now, motor vehicle was purchased in 2016, likewise uh, plant, and likewise, software cost. Now, what can you see is that the depreciation rate is 25%. Now we are doing the capital allowance. Our capital allowance is 25% for each of the years, which means it's 12.5, 12.5, 12.5. OK, your property, the capital allowance rate is what? 10% or true. And this is just our first year of putting the asset to use. 10% of 120,000 is this. And plant and equipment, our capital allowance rate, according to the question, is 20% for the first five years. Okay, and in that situation, remember we started business in 2016, 20%, 20, 20 of 100 is 20, 20 to 2018. Software, software cost, Software is 40% in year one, 30% in year two, and 30% in year three. Therefore, 40% in year one is eight because the software cost is how much? How much is our software cost? Software cost is 20,000, which means in year one, we charge 40% of 12,000, of 20,000, which is 8,000, 30% in year two, and 30% in year three. And that is how we have at our total capital what allowances, which we are to consider here as additions for the year. Okay, that speaks to that. Now, the next one, and we are going to come back to this information that the tax rate has remained unchanged over the years, which means there's no change in tax rates. Now, information four, who will read? Anyone that have good knowledge of financial instruments? I wait who we read. Who will volunteer?
it's a reward, sir. Sorry, I lost concentration. Additional information four. The financial assets comprise of the following equity investment portfolio A in the sum of 2.2 billion naira acquired on 1st of July 2018, and of the business model to actively trade for speculative capital appreciations and taking advantage of arbitrage opportunities in the market. As at the year end, the investments have not been sold but have its fair value as at 31st December 2018 to be 2.24 billion. Another okay, let us pick it one by one. Okay, let us finish with this first one. Who can contribute to this first one? Financial instruments, financial instruments. I don't really know financial instruments. Mm -hmm. Equity investments. Portfolio A, the sum of 2.2 billion acquired on 1st of July 2018, and kind of the business model to actively trade for speculative. Ah, I don't fully understand financial instruments, so I'm just going to find. Okay, who else will contribute? Uh, wait contribution. I can see Hussein Salami, Emmanuel, Charity, Ade, Nohe, Ololade, at Olua Shibilure, Consola, Oyin Consola, Vian, and many more. Okay, somebody said. There has been a gain on the value of investment since they did not indicate default treatment to profit or losses applicable. Even though your treatment might be correct, but uh, you need to first of all identify what class of financial assets is this transaction. And the equity investment portfolio A from the business model here that requires its active trading for speculative gains and taking advantage of uh, arbitrage opportunities signify that this asset qualify as those measured at fair value to profit or loss. And since it was acquired on 1st of July 2018 at 2.2 billion, and as at reporting date, the fair value has now increased to 2.24 billion, we need to recognize fair value gain of 40,000 a 40 million naira. And that is what it means. And I think that is what Ulua Shemilori is saying. And let's see how that plays out in this hour note. Financial instrument. Okay. Okay, see where I have my investment income. My financial, the fair value gain or loss of my financial assets. The fair value on 1st of July was 2.2 .2 million. And the fair value as at end of the year, December 2018 was 2.24 million. The difference is 40 million. And take note, the fair value gain or loss on financial assets measured at fair value to profit or loss should be recognized in profit or loss in accordance with the requirement of IFRS 9. And that is what we are going to do, which means which is in compliance or which is in tandem with what Shemilori said in our answer. Okay, now let's move further to the second aspect of it. Over to you, Oluwatobi. Another set of equity investment portfolio B. Sorry. 
Toby, can you continue with the reading? Or somebody else pick it up from there? Another set of equity investment portfolio B that are solely held to meet liquidity requirements slated for the future and the board of the company by irrevocable election designated the equity investment portfolio B as fair value through other comprehensive income. The investment portfolio B was acquired on 10 September 2018 and the current fair value stood at 780 million naira. But should I continue? No, before you continue, let us analyze that also. Who will contribute to analyzing that? Are we going to accord this scenario the same treatment like the first one? And if not, why? Who will contribute to that? Okay, now let me contribute. Based on the motive here and the accounting policy of the board to have irrevoc irrevocably elected to designate the investment or equity investment portfolio at fair value to other comprehensive income means it falls within a class of fair value to other comprehensive income. And the implication of that is that the fair value gain or loss will be reported to OCI. Now, they gave us the fair value at 780 million, but they didn't give us information about the cost. But if you recall, they said the financial asset comprises of these two. Now, what is the total cost of the financial asset in the books? The financial asset in the books sum up to 3 billion. If that is the case, out of the 3 billion, 2.2 billion belongs to portfolio class A, and the balance will belong to portfolio class B, which means the balance is 800 million. But the 800 million now has reduced to 780, which means the fair value loss of 20 million will go to other comprehensive income. And where is that? That is it here. Now, look at it. The fair value difference is the one measure at fair value to OCI as a 10th of September 2018 was 800. 800 is the balancing figure of between the 2 million and uh, between the 3 million and the 2.2 million. Now, the fair value now is 780, which means there's a fair value loss to be recognized in OCI because of the classification. Invariably, the kind amount of the financial assets of 3 million has now reduced to, has increased to 3.20 million Naira. That is that. Okay, now the next one is, I want somebody to read this expression and tell me what is the implication. The third one. The equity investments have no tax implications as gain arising from their disposal are exempted from income taxes. What does that mean? It what means that. that it means that they are they are uh, inadmissible. Sorry, yes, inadmissible okay. income. Yeah, let me expand it on that. What it means is that gain or losses from financial or equity instrument or equity investment in this case are not subjected to tax, and therefore there's no tax implication on them. Okay, which means. For the purpose of computing income tax, such gain will not be taxed and such loss will not be deductible. Likewise, they will not give rise to different tax implication because such a difference will not reverse itself. Therefore, it's not temporary, rather it's permanent in nature. Therefore, the implication here is that 
even though OCI item is not included in the accounting profit, because accounting profit is profit before tax, but the aspect of fair value gain on financial assets, which is the 40 million, will be back out of this accounting profit in order to arrive at our accessible profit. That's what it means, which is what peace has considered. Also, Ola Inka also has given us that the tax won't be charged on the gain or loss. Thank you. That's equally correct. Now, the final session, trade receivables. Somebody that have a good understanding of impairment of financial assets, especially the one that borders on trade receivable based on simplified approach as required where there's practical expedience to do so. Who will read note five and provide clarification to that? After we finish note five, it then means that we have more or less simplified the notes, we have analyzed the notes, we have passed the relevant entry, that will now lead us to prepare our financial statement. Note five, somebody with sound knowledge of IFRS 9 or intermediate knowledge of IFRS 9. Who will volunteer? Who will volunteer? Trade receivables are grouped below according to their past due. And the company have since with effect from 1st of January, 2018, adopted the IFRS 9 expected credit loss model with the aid of a simplified approach, that is the provision matrix methodology. The opening balance of the allowance for credit losses, that is impairment provision, January 2018 was 249,999,000 Naira. This amount was erroneously omitted in the closing trial balance of 2017 and also still omitted in the trial balance as at 31st December 2018. Now, let us stop at that point first. Let us stop at that point. What is the implication of that omission to your financial statement? I believe you guys have done IS8, changes in accounting policies, changes in accounting estimate and correction of accounting errors. Now this this with error because omission in an account is tantamount to an error. Therefore, how do you correct for these errors with respect to financial statement of 2018 you are preparing? Is open class. Who will contribute? Uh, wait. Do you want me to call names? Uh, there has to be an adjustment for um, the 2017 statement. Okay, how would that adjustment to make it 2017 affect your financial statement of 2018, especially with respect to your opening return earnings. Now I'm giving you a clue. Uh, 
um, since uh, this is um, a provision, an allowance that was omitted, so this uh, provision will be deducted from the retained earnings of the previous year, which is 2017, to get the new, um, the actual new um, retained earnings, the net profit rather for the for that year. And then the um, then that will now form the opening balance for your twenty your for for your twenty eighteen report. Okay, thank you. I think that is in tandem with what somebody said here. Olua Shumiri said errors is treated on the preceding basis, thus the prior year balance will be restated. Also, change in account policy will require a statement of the previous year balance if the previous year balance can be reliably measured. Now, with respect to this, you said the treatment, therefore, is to debit retained earnings, which is the opening retained earnings, since we are not showing the comparative balance for now, and credit impairment of trade receivables. Okay, I think that's equally correct. Now let's see what we've done first with respect to errors. Let me take you to statement of change in equity. Prior year adjustment, note 14. We'll go back to note 14 later. And the error is to adjust, reduce our opening retained earnings, whereby we now have a restated balance, which was Asset. Therefore, I'll say this is asset 31st. I can say this as a 31st December 2017, which is now being restated with this reduction to account for the omission of allowance for impairment losses for last year. Which means if this has been done last year, our attendance will have been 490. That's what we're trying to do. Now, what is note 14? Note 14 is this. Let me expand it. Note 14 says that prior year adjustment, in accordance with the requirement of IS8, the omission regarding the recognition of allowance for credit loss or impairment on trade receivables was to be adjusted against the open retained earnings as of 1st of January 2018 by debit to retained earnings and credit to allowance for credit losses. And that's what we've done there. And that speaks to that. Thank you very much, you guys. Now let's now look at the final aspect. Okay, continue from where you stop. Allowances for credit losses. Over to you. Okay, allowance for credit losses or the reversals are not allowable for deduction or taxable under the current tax regime, except where there is an actual bad debt written off or recovered. Since the commencement of business, there have been no records of bad debts written off. Okay, so we have now the question is, if we have any impairment loss for the year, which we have not yet ascertained, or impairment gain for the year, such will not be considered for tax purposes. Okay, now we are given this information about past D. Who can tell me what are we to do with this information? What are we to do with that information? The schedule. Okay, with this schedule, we can um, actually calculate the provisions based on the provision in based on this table. So for the current, uh, for the past due, the loss rate is 1%. So you'll be able to calculate 1% of the amount given. No, sorry. For the current, we won't be calculating any provision because it's current. So from one to 30. Yeah, but they give us 1% in this case. Uh, okay, in 1%, okay, yeah. So we calculate 1% of the amount given for that will be the amount to be set aside for provision. As a loss. As a loss, yes. Then for one to 30 days, 2.2% will be calculated of the amount stated. Like that, we keep doing that till we get to the 
last okay, week. Okay, let's see what we did with that. Now, see, allowance for credit loss. Now, remember that we have open balance that we have now restated at 249999. Now, for the closing balance, 1% of 7.3 million gave us 73,000. 2.2% uh, of this gave us this. Okay. Another one is 8.5% uh, of this gave us this. 14.7% of this gave us this. And 32.9% of this gave us this. Therefore, this is what you get for the end of the year. When you sum up this, you get 229973. Now, 229973 is a lower amount to your opening balance. That could note that there's a reversal of impairment or what you call impairment gain. Okay. And that is to the tune of 20.021 million. Now, I want somebody to read this technical note. What did I write with respect to this allowance we have done now? Can somebody read it? The allowance for credit losses was carried out in line with the IFRS 9 ECL model, that is expected credit loss with the adoption of the simplified approach with the aim of the, with the age of the provision matrix based on the- Practical expedient. Right, practical expedient. In the year, the measurement resulted in the recognition of impairment gain, which resulted in the reduction of administrative expenses for the Okay, thank you. That means in our administrative expenses, impairment gain arising from that will be used to reduce our admin expense because it's like a profit, okay? It's like a profit. Okay, that is that. Thank you. Now doing this, we've dealt with all of the additional information. Now, what then do we need to do is to now look at it that, okay, We've done this before, not one this with cost of sales. How do you determine cost of sales? No two determines our administrative expenses, which means you pick all of the item in the trial balance, especially all of these do not require adjustments. Okay, plus those ones that came out as a result of adjustments, these are as a result of what? Adjustment too. Let me put them in different colors. Okay, and this is the depreciation we determine and the amortization we determine. All of this is what sum up to administrative cost. Now, when you go back to our profit or loss, you find out that revenue required no adjustment because they gave us revenue on a platter of gold. Cost of sales, we have determined that. Administrative expenses is what we just finished. The next one is distribution cost. Distribution cost is given to us in the trial balance straightforward. Okay, there's no problem about distribution cost. It is in the trial balance. As given the trial balance. That is that. And this is how we obtain operating expenses. Deducted from your gross profit, we have our operating profit. Now, remember investment income from the three. Investment income was a fair value gain. Fair value gain from the financial asset measured to profit or loss. Furthermore, we got our profit before interest and taxes. Our finance costs, how do you arrive at our finance costs? It's in our trial balance. What is the amount there in our travel and interest on bank overdraft? 41 million. That is there as our finance cost. And that gives us profit before taxes. Now, what is left for us is income tax. But before I get to income tax, I quickly take you to other comprehensive income. 
the only item in other comprehensive income is a fair value gain or loss from financial asset measured at fair value to profit or loss. Which was the 20 million loss? If you remember the 20 million loss, this 20 million loss arose from the financial asset that was measured at fair value to OCI, if you remember. Okay, now we we'll come back there. What matter to me now is income taxes. That is where the major work is. Income taxes. How do you get this 998 million? Now, income tax comprises of current tax and deferred tax. Now, 998 million, from what you can see here, is our current tax charge, which is from note 15. And we're going to go back to note 15. And our deferred tax credit, which is note 19. Now let's start with current tax charge, not 15. Remember that our profit before taxes is this. Where do we get it from? We get it from our income statement here, profit before tax. Now we we'll go back to that. We do tax adjustments. Adjustment where we add back depreciation, adjustment where we add back amortization, adjustment where we add back fines and penalties, adjustment where we add back our accrued expenses regarding truck if you remember. And we deduct impairment gain. Remember, it's not deductible for tax purposes and it's not taxable also. And our fair value gain on financial assets, which is exempted from tax. All of these adjustments sum up to this 100. Adding this 100 back to this gave us our profit accessible to tax, what we otherwise know as accessible profit, or profit adjusted for tax purposes, which is otherwise known as adjusted profits. Now, capital allowance, there was no loss to be relieved. Our capital allowance, no balance brought forward from the formation. But if you remember, our additions to our capital allowance is note 15, which we determined earlier, this amount, based on our computation relating to year. This year is 2018, this is the year that is relevant to us. Let me highlight it. This is the relevant year, which is 20 what? 18, our third year in operation. And the sum of what came from here is what from this. And when you add this to zero, it gave us 50.5 million, which is available to be absorbed in full because we have sufficient profit to absorb it. And that is how we have a taxable profit. If you remember, we are told that our tax rate from our question here to be 40 what percent. This 40 percent is what we applied on this our taxable profit. Okay, I can say 40% of 3102025. Okay, that is how we arrive at this. I remember I showed you earlier how we try to deduct our over provision for tax in the prior year. And that is that. This is how we obtain this amount that we have here. Very straightforward. Okay, deferred tax is the next thing we want to get. Now, remember our deferred tax. We are given our deferred tax liability as a beginning of the year, which was for last year, 127 million. How do you have 127 million? If you come to your trial balance, we have it here. Deferred tax liability, 127 million. Now, in the current year, what's our deferred tax liability? Uh, and we have deferred tax assets in the current year to be 19. How do you arrive at 19? Let's look at note 21. Note 21, we create our table. Our table is our asset and liabilities as we have it in our balance sheet. Remember, this is our balance sheet, okay? We pick all items in our balance sheet, which are the representation of our kind amount. We pick them. We pick them one by one and we plug them here. Property plant and equipment, intangible asset, financial asset, inventory, trade receivable, cash and cash equivalent, bank overdraft, and trade payable. Now we pick the tax base. Tax base of property, plant, and equipment. If you go back to the notes, 
that is note 20. This is not, where is it? Not what? That's a, let me trace it. Okay, that is it here. Note 17. What is the cost? The aggregate cost of our asset is what we add from our trial balance, okay, for plant and equipment. Less accumulated depreciation, which is what we have here. The sum of all of these depreciation, uh, capital allowances is what sum up to this. And at the end of the day, our tax return down value is our tax base for fixed asset or PPE. And that's how we obtain the 160. Software, what is it? The tax base. We also go there, software, what is the cost? The cost of the software is 20 million. What is the total cumulative capital allowance? Remember the sum of it is 20. And all of it has been enjoyed in three years. How do I know? Because even in the information given to us here, we were told about capital allowance for software. They said we enjoy our capital allowance for three years. First year is 40%, second and third year are 30% respectively, which means over three years you have enjoyed it in full. Therefore, there's no written down value. That is what this means. And that is how we have a zero here. Okay, for financial assets, Anything that has no tax implication, we have this kind of value and tax base to be the same. Remember what we discussed with respect to the information provided there, that the equity investment has no tax implication, as gain arising from the disposal are exempted from income taxes, which means anything that has no tax implication will not give rise to default tax. And I think I can also show you from this, our material, which we had discussion, on income taxes. Okay, let me just quickly show you. Yeah. Okay, look at what I've said there. If the economy benefit will not be taxable, the tax base is equal to the kind amount, and therefore there's no temporary difference or deferred tax. And that is the position that we have taken. And that is what we have adopted in answering this question here. Okay. Okay. And that is what we have done. Okay, that's why this is 320. Now, the same thing, inventory, inventory has its kind of amount and is the same because the information provided to us in inventory is that the write down we have done is equally acceptable for tax purposes. For venture, if this amount is not acceptable for tax purposes, the difference between this 87. 874 million and 846 million, probably in the range of uh, about 28 million, will be added back to our inventory value to obtain our tax base, which means our tax base will not be 846, it will be 876. Having the fact that at this point where we are determining our income taxes, we'll have add back this write off for inventory. But we did add back write off for inventory because it is acceptable for tax purposes. And therefore, it will not give rise to different tax. And for it not to give rise to different tax, the tax piece and the kind of amount will be the same. Next is trade receivable. Now, trade receivable, our kind of amount is what we have in our balance sheet, but what is our tax base? Okay, our tax base is this. Look at it here. Let me do this analysis. Let me. Let me use uh, spotlight to show it. The gross amount of our opening balance, kind amount was this. Remember that we add back allowance for credit loss, which means if you have not deducted your, your uh, expected credit loss, your trade dispute balance as gross amount will be higher and it will have been 9.186 million. 
Now, in the year end, your balance of trade receivable was 9.1 from your trial balance. If you can go back to trial balance, our trial balance is this. 9353 and this 9353 is what we are restating it to because in our balance sheet now it is nine where is it it's 9123 9123 because in note 11 if you could go to note 11 we have deducted impairment loss we are now saying that the impairment loss you deducted has make you to arrive at this the first one is your opening balance sheet you restricted, okay, for the payment loss omitted. The second one is the impairment gain that arose from reduction in this impairment allowance, which gave us 9123. And this 9123 is after impairment. What then do you need to do? You add back your impairment loss in order to restate it as if there was no impairment deduction. And what are you adding back? What you are adding back is simply what you have deducted before, which was 229. 973. Now, what do you have here? 229973 to restate it back. The movement between this and this is what will give rise to your increase. That is for the purpose of um, cash flow statement. But again, when you look at it here, this 3953, if you check where it's coming from, it came from what we have done here by adding back our allowance for credit loss to our balance, which was reported net. And that gives us the tax base. You can refer back to the exercise we did with respect to income tax two days ago, and also to the lecture video material that we've done. Now, cash and cash equivalent, we, not, we have no temporary difference because cash is recognized based on what it is as cash, whether for tax purposes or for accounting purposes. Bank overdraft has no implication since there's no information about it, but trade payable has implication. What was implication? If you remember in our accrued expenses here, trucking expenses, we know we dealt with it that the law says that for tax purposes, expenses accrued for will only be allowed when it has been paid. And since it's still been in accrual, it means it has not been paid. Therefore, that is why if you come back to the note, we disallow it as an expense. Disallowing it as an expense here implies that for the purpose of deferred tax, it's going to create a temporary difference. And that is why for purpose of deferred tax, we adjust our trade payable by deducting the amount that will be deducted for tax purposes in the future in line with the requirement of IAS 12 to be able to obtain our tax base. If you go back to what we have done, in class or in the video material, you'll find out that how do we obtain the tax base of an asset? The tax base of an asset is obtained as follows. The tax base of a liability, sorry, is obtained as follows. It is the carrying amount of a liability less the amount that will be deducted for tax purposes in respect of that liability in the future periods. That is why you find out that we have more or less deducted this in arriving at our tax base. We deducted this sum of amount, okay? Sorry, this deducts, not add. Okay, and that is that. Now, the beauty of using Excel is that when you make use of Excel, it updates all your solution. And that is what you do in the real life. You don't do account or tax assessment on a sheet of paper. And that's why you find out that in ACCA, in CIMA and others, it is computer based. Therefore, everything you are going to do is on Excel, on the computer and not on paper. And therefore you can see how this has more or less corrected for it. Okay, let us take note of that. I'm going to share this Excel note later. We are supposed to deduct according to our expression, not to add. And therefore that is that with respect to deferred tax. We now find out as follows, the following things that resulted from it. Now, for this are taxable, why some are what? Deductible. And taxable will give rise to different tax liability. Deductible will give rise to different tax or what? Assets. And one of those things you need to know is what we pointed out in this case. Okay, now in this case, you have 
the kind amount, the kind amount of uh, trade payable is greater than this. Therefore, automatically in this case, this will be Yeah. Okay. This will be deductible. Remember, we've deducted it there. That's why it's changing it. Therefore, this will be deductible, and therefore, this will result in different types of assets. Okay. Net net, we still have net of an asset. Okay. That is that. Now, what then do we need to do? How do we obtain the assets? This is the different tax asset we have here. Okay. This is flowing from here, as you can see. And therefore, that is our position. This is the net movement at the end of the day. Okay, and this net movement will reduce our income tax from 1.1 1, 1 million, which is based on the current taxes to 898, 1.1 1 .1 billion to 898 million naira. And that is that with respect to that. Now that is how we obtain our income tax here. Now the next aspect is basic EPS. Now for basic EPS note 23, note 23, which we have done before, the only thing that we didn't have then was earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. And what is the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders? You find it from your profit or loss, which is your profit for the year. In computing EPS, you don't consider other comprehensive income. You only compute EPS from the perspective of profit for the year or loss for the year. And which is this amount. And remember, we have discussed how we will obtain the weighted average number of ordinary shares in Egypt. Okay, and for diluted EPS, we don't have any potential shares that could have given rise to potential dilution. Therefore, in that case, your basic EPS and diluted EPS will be the same. That's why I said technical note here. There are no potential ordinary shares as at the reporting date. Okay, that is that any other information here. Now, your balance sheet, how do you arrive at our balance sheet? Our balance sheets are flowing from each of the notes. Note seven. Note seven is where we have our cost of assets, our total cost from the travelance is 270, our related depletion from travelance plus the additional depletion for the period is what we have here as a six twenty uh, six one million two fifty thousand naira. Similarly, we do that same thing for. our intangible assets. And that's how we obtain our kind amount of PP and of intangible software costs. And that is that in our balance sheet, the two. Financial asset, if you remember note, if you remember note eight or note 10, where we have the underlisted, after looking at the gain or loss from the financial world, assets. And that is what we have there. Okay, now next one is different tax assets. Different tax asset is what flows from what we just completed the other time, and which is the amount we derive from the amount we derive from here, which you can all see. Okay, different tax. assets. Okay, next one in our balance sheet is inventory. 
Remember note one, where event two was measured at the lower of cost and neutralizable value, which is what we see there. Next one is trade receivables. Trade receivable is after subjecting it to impairment. Remember, first of all, adjusting our opening balance and adjusting it for impairment gains for the period. The next one we have is cash and cash equivalents. It's as it is in the trial balance. Okay, if you come to your trial balance, your cash and cash equivalents, there was no adjustment for cash. These are cash and cash equivalents. Where is it? Okay, petty cash and bank balances. Therefore, you can also check it from the breakdown I did here. Petty cash and cash balances. And you can see it here, bank balance and petty cash balance. You don't offset overdraft with it. Overdraft will be shown separately as a current liability. And that's why when you come to current liability, you see bank overdraft sitting on its own. You don't offset it because it does not pass the rule of offsetting. I remember the condition for offsetting, especially with respect to IFRS 9, where bank balances and other things emanate from, is that one, there's legally a right prior to offset. Two, the asset have to be realized solely for the purpose of settling the liability, which is not the case here. Trade payables is as it is in the trial balance. Acquired tax payable is what we have done upon our assessment here. Remember from our trial balance, we have this opening balance and we less the cash we paid during the period. And this gives us our balance as per trial balance after cash payment and current tax charge was this, and that is how we're able to arrive at current tax payable. Okay, and that is that. Okay. Now, finally, we have our share capital, share premium retainings and other components of equity. And that we can find out that under this. Now, yeah, remember that after restating our balances to correct for prior adjustments or errors, will bring in forth our profit for the year. Our profit for the year as it's what flows from the income statement, okay? Followed by transaction within equity or transaction with owners of equity. The first one is that we add additional shares. And if you go to note 13, note 13, from note 13, you can see the analysis of additional shares we had, okay? Now, what is additional share acquired uh, uh, issue? Number of shares we nearly issue was 50 million. The issue price is 4 naira 20 kobo. If you go back to the question, 4 naira 20 kobo. But the nominal price is 50 kobo, which means the shares was issued at a premium of 3 naira 70 kobo. This is a premium. The premium is the SS over the nominal price. That's thing like 70 cobo. The premium will go to share capital. Sorry, the nominal price will go to share capital. The premium will go to share premium. Okay. And that's how we arrive at that. Okay. And this is how we determine what is the opening balance before the new shares is by working back. Okay. And that is what influenced what we did here with respect to statement of changes in equity. That's how we got it. And dividend was paid, which was from the trial balance. You can see the amount of dividend paid, which flows from the trial balance, which you have here, $800 million, okay, or million naira. Okay, that is that. Now, finally, you are told to present statement of cash flows just for operating activities. Now, what is it? Profit before tax, again, is what flows from our profit or loss position, okay? Thereafter, you are just for non-cash item. First is depreciation of property, plant, and equipment. Second is amortization. All of this still flows from our income statement. And also you can see that from the breakdown of administrative expenses, including accrual regarding trucking expenses, Interest paid on bank overdraft will be reclassified. 
not because it's not cash, but because we are classifying it either as a financial activity or we are classifying it below the line within the session where we have tax paid as an operating activity, which means this is like in and out. Okay, impairment of trade distributable does not give rise to cash flow. You deduct it. This impairment gain, if you remember, that's why we are deducting. If it's impairment loss, you add back. Okay, and that is that. All of this culminates to the adjustment for non-cash items, which now brings our cash flow from operations, the fortunes in working capital to this. Now, increase in inventory is as a result of what we have in our balance sheet as inventory and what we have from the information given to us as our opening, uh, our closing balance for last year. Our inventory balance for last year was, um, okay, you'll find it from the working we did here. Where's our inventory balance? We see it in our trial balance. Where's it? Inventory from trial balance, where's it? Okay, inventory as a general is 800. We compare this 800 with 846, and that shows increase in inventory. An increase in inventory automatically is tantamount to usage of cash, and that's why it's a reduction. Increase in trade receivable, you can see that from our analysis we did here. Remember, we compare the trade receivable given that we have not, um, uh, what's it called, deducted impairment loss with our trade receivable in 2018, which means we compare Apple with Apple. The movement shows that there's an increase in trade receivable. Increase in trade receivable is tantamount to utilization of cash. And we have increase in trade payable, massive increase in trade payable. And we can see that from the fact that our trade payable was higher with respect to this, which was 9.2 before, now 11.28. But in our trial balance, it is 11.15. Why? We deducted the accrued expenses because of the adjustment we have made to that with respect to this, because we've added it back here. We deducted it back there to neutralize it. And the movement in it, it what creates this. An increase in trade payable is more or less like you are buying more cash, having more cash at hand. The sum of these adjustments is your changes in working capital to the tune of 1.8. Adjusting this to this will give us cash flow from operating activities or from operation after working capital changes. Now, tax paid. Remember, we've done one analysis where we obtain the balancing figure as our tax paid here. Yeah? And therefore, we take note of that. Okay, let me put it in red so that we can know that we derived it as a derived figure or balancing figure. Because we compare it with what we have as open balance, we compare it with our current tax charge, which flows from note 15, and we compare it with what we have in our balance sheet. And that is what it is as at that point in time. Okay, and this one to four flows from what we have already there. Okay, now that is that. And our interest paid on bank overdraft, remember I said it is in here, it is out here. And that is how we arrive at our net card generated from operating activities. And that brings us to the end of that session. If you painstakingly look at it, what this class is meant for is to refer you to every principle that supports what we have done. It's not for you to come and cram answer or solution to the question. Rather, have you been able to relate everything we've discussed with individual principles in the question with respect to IFRS. The floor is open for your inputs. Additional questions or contributions or further clarifications if need be. Any questions? Any question?
if there's okay, somebody said, I'm unclear with the treatment of interest on OD in the statement of cash flows. Okay. Um, first, let me explain to you. IA7 allows alternative treatment for interest paid. Interest paid, other than for a financial institution, can either be treated as a financing cost under financing activity or under operating activities. Are you getting it now? If I treat it under financing activity, I'll totally take it out from here. Even though I've adjusted it here, I'll take it to the financing activity. But if I chose to show it under operating activity, I must do that consistently, which is what I've done. And I have to do that as part of tax body and interest body, which is outside your core operation. That's why I adjusted it out of the core operation to below the line. But again, if you check your standard, it's so clear that the standard gives allowance where interest paid can either be treated as operating activity or as a financing activity. The only time you cannot treat it other than as an operating activity is if you're a financial institution because it's your core operation to borrow and to lend. Does that make sense to you now? Any other question? Any other question? You can ask question by way of chat or you'll mute yourself and ask directly. Any other question? Any other question? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, good evening. I wanted to ask Sam, these profits before taxes under operating activities, I've seen a situation whereby in some question they take um, the profit before interest or tax. Is there yeah, any difference think... between using the profit before interest and tax and using the profit before tax? Okay, uh, um, it's more preferable you pick profit before tax. But when you pick profit before interest and tax, it means if you do that, instead of taking adjusting again for this interest, you will not need to adjust for it. For example, if you come back to a profit or loss, profit for interest and tax will not have considered this, which means if I pick this, for example, let me do that for you. Let me say in my statement of cash flow, I pick this item. I pick this. Therefore, automatically, this is what I will pick. This is what I'll pick. Therefore, there won't be need for this adjustment. That's what it means. Are you getting what I'm saying now? For example, there won't be need for that adjustment. Yes. Okay, Do thank you. you. But it's much more preferable in practice that you pick profit before taxes. Because people resonate much more with profit for taxes. It's only investment and analysts that resonate with much more profit before interest and tax and profit before interest tax, depletion and amortization, EBITDA and all sorts of things for valuation purposes. But to pure accounting and other stakeholders for appreciating and understanding financial statements, will prefer or is much more in practice and standardized to start from profit before taxes. And some people also start with profit after tax, which is profit for the year. Which means if you start with profit for the year, you adjust back for the tax component before you now bring back the tax rate. 
But all of those things might change in the immediate future as what the standard is, uh, IESB is trying to do now is to standardize some of those basic reporting, especially with respect to statement of cash flows and also to some other things. You should expect in the next few months or one year, certain changes that will come in the presentation of financial statements and also with respect to the statement of cash flows. Okay. Now, uh, two people has contributed, or three people has contributed extensively today. Zoba, once again, but Zoba has won prize in the last class. Therefore, you are not winning again today. Two people that have won prize with me is uh, Peace, Obade, and uh, Oluatobi Awe. Okay, the one for Zoba will go to somebody that all of our answers is on chat. I think we gave the alternative of chat. The third person will have been, uh, that is, is uh, Oluwa Shemilori Adioti. Three of you just chat me up that you are the one and your means of identification so that I can provide you your, your what would I call it, your gift. Your gift will be my text, if you have had it before, too much of it is not a crime. You take it and dash somebody else or put it in your library or keep it for your child or children in the future if the standard will still be relevant there. Okay, please chat me up after. Uh, peace, Oluwatobi and Oluwa Shemilori. Zoba, uh, yes. you have won two times. Uh, the one you won, you have not even collected it. Therefore, there's no other one for you other than that one. Okay. There's no harm in having two, sir. No, no, you didn't win today. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody said, Emmanuel said, sir, what do you recommend as step to follow to make relevant adjustment before computing financial statement? Uh, I think my own recommendation is that keep those adjustments one by one, try to tackle them and flow it into the financial statement. Otherwise, if you start with trial balance and you are just plotting it, there will be many adjustments might miss out and which might make it complicated. But again, in all what you do, timing is key. You must be smart with your time. Go with risk watches, set your time. You must not stay long on things. Otherwise, you might not be able to cover as much as what you need to cover for the purpose of passing the examination. Any other contribution? Okay, in the absence of none, thank you very much for this evening. And I really appreciate you guys for your extensive patience, contribution. And uh, I wish you best of luck in your exam and um, best wishes. And as you finish the exam, okay, just know that uh, the word of your facilitator it's not in heaven. Okay. Remember us both in prayer, in wealth. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very you much. For today. Thank you very much, sir. God bless yeah, you. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Yeah.